What happened at Fatima on October 13, 1917? The mere presence of 30 to 100,000 people was highly unusual in this forgotten backwater. Despite the heavy rain, people of all conditions gathered to witness nothing less than a miracle, which had been announced three months earlier. At the predicted time, the rain stopped, the sky cleared around a strangely distinct but moonlike sun, which was delicately veiled by some high altitude clouds. Eyewitness Gonzalo Garrett, a professor of mathematics at the University of Coimbra and a specialist in celestial mechanics, described the uncanny light source in these terms. For about 10 minutes, it began to spin quickly on its periphery, flashing sparks of light rather like a Catherine wheel, stopping and starting again three times. This is just not possible at noon, when meteorological effects are extremely weak. His son, Jose Maria, added that it looked like a pointed, glittering silver pearl, pale, and yet brighter than the full moon. It would appear that Fatima is one of the worst scientifically explained phenomena. The many different explanations show how diverse the scientific community is. Not convinced by any of the others, each group tries to push its own story, thereby showing the weakness of the arguments. I would like to challenge most of the current conjectures which do not stand up to a comparative analysis of either witnesses, meteorological data, and photographs. My aim is to bring more clarity to this event. With a view to trivializing the event, some critics talk about numerous claimed sun miracles, which are easy to discredit. Gonzalo Garrett, mentioned above, wrote that until Fatima, no one saw solar sparkling rotations, and now all sorts of people see them many times much will be imagination. Besides, because of cognitive and desire bias on the part of the observer, psychological illusions of alleged gyrating suns, apparently observed by motivated skeptics, scientists, or believers, either to trivialize the illusion or to experience a miracle, seem more likely after the accounts of Fatima. The sun dog's hypothesis is not at all convincing. These reflections of the sun on ice particles are at their brightest at polar temperatures or latitudes when the sun is low on the horizon. As the sun's elevation rises above 40 degrees, they fade and are most often absent. The elevation the day in Fatima was over 42 degrees. At this elevation, people would see three suns, the bright sun, flanked by its two dimmer, rainbow-colored, blurred, distorted, never sharp, nor round, nor fast-rotating, sun dogs. Moreover, they had been studied for centuries, especially by Descartes, Marriott, and Huygens. And no one dared to put forward such a hypothesis a century ago. Portuguese newspapers mentioned the heavy rain just before the event, especially the skeptical press, such as O Seculo and O Lustras ao Portuguesa, which proved to be the main source of information about this surprising event. The published photos taken by Judah Rua contradict the skeptic's argument that the strong sun dried nearly everything, well after any gentle rain showers. The photos show mud flows, wet and unshod feet shining with moisture and covered with mud, puddles, umbrellas still wet and shiny, etc. Besides, all over Europe, press and war news reported widespread rainfalls, as was the case on the battlefront, or in Valladolid in Spain. This is confirmed by the European Project Sera 20C, which compiled civil and military data to produce precipitation and temperature maps for the 20th century. While the weather cleared up locally around Fatima, European, North American, and North African observatories were unable to observe the sun because of rain clouds which spread from North America to Russia. Look also at this young man who has been kneeling for a few minutes at most. The upper part of his pants is soaked, no doubt explicable by the fact that he recently unbuttoned his jacket, probably because he was feeling hot, while the areas exposed for a few moments have already dried. The less exposed inner part of the buttock is still half wet, except for the few folds which were briefly exposed some time later. The strong contrast between the wet and dry areas shows sharp infrared shadows and confirms rapid evaporation after heavy rain. The patterns contrast with the strange and barely discernible luminous shadows on the photos. In-depth shadow analysis shows that there were two main light sources, first a sharp and hot moon-like sun, and second, a nearly vertical, wide and diffuse source, probably a well-lit cloud. Most critics discount the testimony of people who were unable to share in the expectations or the emotions of the crowd at Fatima. 
none of them mention the sensation of warmth, perhaps due to a much greater distance from what appears at most as a pale and spinning sun. Their gaze did not point towards the sun, but rather to the mountains around Fatima. This fact has mostly been ignored. The famous poet, Afonso López Vieira, who observed the event from his veranda by the sea in San Pedro de Mole, was stunned by the solar phenomenon over the mountain at Fatima, about 66 degrees east of the sun's direction some 34 kilometers away. A convinced atheist, he was converted by this light show. Guillermina da Silva, from Lay area, was looking toward the mountains at noon, when she suddenly saw, a great red flash. This point is 43 degrees east of the sun's direction. The mountains hid part of the event from her. Albano Barros in Minde, saw the sun falling in the direction of Fatima. This is due north, in the opposite direction to the midday sun. In Albiratel, Joachim and Ignacio Lorenzo together with their school's pupils and teachers and several of the village's inhabitants, saw the sun spinning on itself like a snowball. An effective perspective at 80 degrees west of the suns may explain this, but it is quite different from the Catherine Will firework at Fatima. Altogether, remote testimonies and their effect of looking towards Fatima tend to invalidate most of the current hypotheses, such as mass suggestion or hallucination, and contradict any directional solar influences, such as sun dogs, retinal phosphines, atmospheric dust, brain illusions, etc., since neither the sun nor its position was the cause. We have cited objective elements that have often been ignored or rejected, however, there remains one that seems never to have been analyzed so far. Actually, it is possible to estimate the elevation of the light source, based on the analysis of the shadows in Rue's photos. This poses an additional conundrum to the Fatima case. I computed the position of the light source using Blender 3D simulator software. The center of view C, the horizon center HC, and the roll angle of the camera, are quite easy to estimate, as well as the vanishing point VP of the solar rays, towards which all sun rays converge. The focal length estimation was less accurate, so I took a wide range of realistic values, from 30 to 45 millimeters. The effects of roll and pitch errors were also assessed. Overall, the calculations give the sun height at between 25 and 32 degrees, most probably 28 degrees, quite a lot lower than the expected 42 to 43 degree for the astronomical sun. Those interested in mathematical calculations can click on the links given in the commentary. Our conclusions? All in all, the in-depth analysis of the photos and the testimonials invalidate any attempt at a coherent explanation, meteorological, physiological or psychological. All naturalistic explanations today do not account for all the observational details and credible testimonies. It is not a question, however, of giving up on an explanation of the phenomenon but of eliminating defective explanations. Our purpose here, was to provide elements of in-depth objective research. Finally, it should be added that most interpretations completely ignore the link with the message of Fatima. For believers, this message is more important than the wonderful light show at Fatima. With it, the message forms a whole in an unusual divine intervention, and corroborates the truth of its message, which contains above all, a warning against the inherent dangers of distancing ourselves from God.